Hi, everybody. This is Jeanette from Boyigua Sewing and Crafts. One of the things that I wanted to do in this video is share with you some of the things that I really love about using in Brilliance. I'm working on some designs today, and there was three things that really stuck up on my mind that I get a lot of questions about whenever I am working on any of my items in embroidery on my channel, okay? So I wanted to cover those three things with you in Embrillas because I really feel that this is really um, helpful, especially for those that love to embroider and use the software. Now, I wanted to let you guys know up front, I am not a digitizer and I really am not like one, two, I'm not, I don't really like digitizing and stuff. I just know the very basic and that's about it. And I think that's as far as I want to go. I really love to just embroider and create the items. But however, as you learn embroidery, you really should know at least the very basics of, um, of you know, how digitizers create designs and stuff. But um, anyway, I wanted to show you um, some of the things that I do in Embrilliance that really helped me a lot. And I thought maybe this would be helpful for you guys as well. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to add Embrilliance to my screen. So that way you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. And I'm going to talk to you guys about three situations where I use Embrilliance the most. Okay. So in your screen right now, what you see is you see a heart. Okay. Now this is an applique design. All right. Now, the way you would know that it's an applique design is because you would click over here on the right-hand side and you will see the properties. And as you can see right here, this is the final um, stitch and it's really just the placement stitch. This is the tack down stitch. As a matter of fact, let's just let's run this whole thing. Let's see how this really is, because I just got this file and I really one of the things that popped up immediately to me was this line in the middle of the heart, as you can see. OK, that line in the heart has got to go. All right. Because for some reason, the digitizer decided just to start um, creating the design right there. So let's do this. The, uh, the stitch simulator, OK, which is the little the little point. That, that you have going down with the three dots. And that's one of the functions that I truly love about the software is you get to see how the machine is going to stitch out the file. So I see there's a couple of points in here. And I think, okay, I just wanna see, all right, it looks like this is a placement stitch, but as I said before, um, it's actually starting this right here, okay? I don't like that. I wanna take that out for sure. Then I see there's a yellow that's going on, and I believe that's the tack down. It's doing a zigzag, okay, which I know after the tack down, you cut it out. Then there's a zigzag, and then it looks like this is going to be the satin stitch, okay, which the satin stitch is the final stitch, all right? So now, there's two things with this file. If you are using applique, which means that you're going to be putting some kind of fabric inside of the design, you know, that's okay, that's fine. Um, this line would not be a big problem. But sometimes I don't want to actually put a piece of fabric in the middle of the design. Sometimes I kind of like the way the design is as is, and I'm just not going to put it and I'll just let it run the whole way. Okay. Now in that situation though, if I wanted to just use this heart as the heart, because I just want a heart around, I really don't, I'm not going to fill it in. There's a couple of things that I'm going to modify with this design. First of all, I want to get rid of this line. Second, I don't need a tack down stitch, all right, because all I want is to stitch it out. So right away, looking at this, I'm going to get rid of the first, the, the, the line right here, and I want to show you exactly how I'm planning on doing that. Now, when you see, when you do the um, stitch simulator, you notice that right in the very beginning, it starts, the, the needle goes right here, and then when I hit the next stitch, it automatically jumps down to the bottom. To get rid of that line, what I am going to do is if you look all the way at the top of my screen, right where it has where you where you see your mouse. And here I'm gonna do this slow so that you can see. 
right here, there is a stop button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a stop. Okay. And I'm going to pick another color. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now is I am going to put dark gray. Okay. And I'm going to hit okay. Now, another thing, before I hit okay, though, I want you to see something. Look over here on the right of your of the screen. See how it has all these steps in here of the design? It's, this is the whole, step one, okay, is the whole design, right? Then you have 1.1, 1, .1, 1 well, it's not really points, col colon, 1 colon 1, 1 colon 2, 1 colon 3, okay? Now, I am going to insert a stop in here right now. When I hit OK, this is going to expand. So I'm going to hit OK right here. There you go. Now, look what happened. This just expanded, OK? Now, what do I want to do? I want to get rid of this, this one, OK? This is the actual step, which is 1 colon 1. 1 colon 1 is now the only line. I want to get rid of that. And this is a good thing to learn because there are going to be times when you buy embroidery files and for some reason it has a, a certain lingering line that you don't want. You want to get rid of that stitch because you don't want the design because then what happens is you have to either you have to cut it. I don't know why in, um, some digitizers do it. So if someone out there is a digitizer and if there's a purpose, I would love to know. Um, sometimes I think it's just the comfort level. That's just where people like to start designing. I could be wrong. I don't know. But I know that me as a um, machinist, as the one that actually likes to do the actual embroidery on the products, I find that not something that I, I like, right? So um, I always, whenever I buy embroidery files, I always remove it. So one of the things that, I, that I'll do here is I'm going to highlight this step, which is one colon one, okay? And I'm going to just hit my delete button. There you go. So as you see, that step is now gone. And if you look at the middle of the screen, it is gone as well. If you go now to the um, stitch simulator, right? And you start clicking, you're gonna notice that my needle is now at the bottom and it is going to start to stitch. Now, I remember I changed the color to a dark gray. I may not, you know, I honestly doesn't bother me the colors because I can go ahead and I can just put the color that I want when I'm on the machine. But if it does bother you and stuff and you just want to go, you know, change it back, just highlight this section, okay? The the 1.1, click on color and go get your red. And then hit okay. And you're back to it. But if you notice, that thing is gone. Now, remember, this is kind of like an applique design. I don't, there are certain things in here that I really don't need, especially if I, all I want to do is just embroider a heart, which is step number two, which is the yellow. I'm going to um, stitch this out again. So if you notice, I'm moving it and see now it's creating my heart. Okay. Now it's going to do like, the yellow, right? I really don't need this step because what I wanted to do is I wanted to draw my my uh, heart. So what I'm going to do is the yellow, okay? If you look over to the right, that right here, it says yellow. Let me remove that stitch, okay? So I'm just gonna go in here, highlight. I'm hitting my delete button again. That is gone, all right? Now, I may want this whole thing to be in red. So this you know, the middle part, which was the zigzag. I'll keep that there. I have no problem with the zigzag. I think that's good. And then what I'll do is I'll just change that to a red. And I'm going to click red. Um, Where's my red? There it is. I'm going to hit OK. And there you go. Now I have a whole thing in red. And, you know, I can go ahead and I can stitch it out. It looks great. It's perfect. Now it's going to do my satin stitch and I'm good to go. And I got my, my heart. Okay. So um, that is one thing that I really, really wanted to show you guys in, in Brilliance because 
this is something that's pretty neat to, to know how to do because it is something that's very, very useful. Sometimes there are stitches in there, maybe certain steps in the design that you don't want there. You can pull designs apart, remove things and stuff, and then also, you know, remove those um, jump stitches that you don't want. I mean, unfortunately, sometimes you can even buy a design that has a lot of jump stitches. And if you want to get rid of it, then I would do that. However, the one of the things with the jump stitches, make sure you hit that stop button because you want the machine to be able to tie a knot at the beginning and the end of all the different color changes, okay? Because what will happen is if you don't put in a, that stop, then what happens is that the, the, the stitches can unravel, okay? So it's just a, a little side note that you should know. Now, I want to go on and show you guys another thing that I get asked about a lot about regarding fonts using in brilliant so we're going to add this back in again and what i'm going to do is i'm going to select another page that i have and here i had just put fonts because i knew i wanted to talk to you guys about this sometimes people want to change the colors of fonts sometimes um i know one lady once she came on she said how do you um do a word and then have the word come out in different colors well, all you have to do is just click on each letter individually and in brilliance and pick the color that you want. Because sometimes you see that a lot of people, they'll create these, these um, words on shirts and it has these different colors. So I'll show you guys how to do that real quick. All you have to do is when you click, when you, when you have your word, okay. Um, let's see, let's get in here. Let me let me start over and add another word in here show you guys all right see here you have your your word but i want you to pay attention what you need is this okay the little box and let me just put my name on there Oop, did a little too big there you go i'll put mellow on there okay now let's say that i got mellow a brand new sweater and i want to put little colors in his name. What I do is on each of these boxes, just highlight that. What happened is you just selected that one letter. Sorry. And then what you do is on the right side, pick the color that you want. And it can be any color. And then go to your next letter, pick a color. Hit OK, go to the next letter, pick a color. Hit OK. And here, let's, let's say if I want a nicer blue or darker blue or something. There you go. OK, very simple, very easy to do. It's not hard at all. Okay, now before also, you know, um, let me see, you can click on, yeah, there you go. All right, another thing too, while we're here, um, let's say that the font is not thick enough. You want to make it a little thicker, right? Well, if you go over to the right side here, you can change the color. Here is tells you a little bit about the letters. You can make them slant. You can space them out if you want. Here, let me move it around so you can see. See, I'm slanting it, and then I can slant it the other way. Okay. If I want to, um, in, you know, increase or decrease the spacing, there you go. See, it spaces out. Or if you want it to be a little more closer, there you go. You can make it closer and stuff. Let's say you want to curve it. You can. See, you can play with it, you know. Um, let's say you want to make it thicker, like I was saying before. Right here under stitch, I use the comp, and right here is where I increase it, and you can make it thicker, okay? Usually what I will do is, depending on the font, you know, if I do want to make it uh, thicker, then what I will do is I will do a two or the most a three. I usually don't go beyond the three. Okay. So that's just something that I wanted to show you guys regarding the fonts. Now, another thing that I want to show you about in brilliance, which is something that I truly, truly love is the density repair module. Okay. Now this is an additional to 
in addition to Embrilliance um, Essentials. But I really, really think it's worth it for the simple fact that in the long term, it does save you money. And I'm going to tell you why. Sometimes what happens is you have a embroidery design, just like the one I'm showing you here. I bought this. It's a beautiful design right out the box. If you look all the way at the bottom over here, it tells you the number of stitches that are in this design. It's 39,782 stitches. This is a gorgeous design and a lot of my customers love it. And one of the, but one of the things that I noticed off the bat when I purchased it is, and, and I first stitched it out, was that it was a very dense, thick design. And the more I looked at how it stitched out, the more I realized that it's just, a, it looks like the digitizer just took actual images and just plopped them all on top of each other. Well, one of the, mod, there's some, a module that you can purchase in Embrillus that's called Density Repair. And what that does is it actually takes the design and what it does is it, it tries to, to make it more, less dense. Now, once you purchase that module, what you do is you get these little icons right here. And I'm pointing at it. It looks like a little vacuum cleaner and it has like a little um, question mark and it's a project advisor, okay? And what it is, is it just tells you you know, a little bit about the project, what it advises regarding, um, you know, stabilizer and all that kind of stuff. I sometimes, you know, I use it, but a lot of times I kind of know. And it's, as more experiences you get in embroidering, the more you start realizing, you know, what, what you should be using, if you should use tearaway, cutaway, and the weight and all that kind of stuff. But one of the things that I want to show you about this was I'm going to highlight this right now. Now, remember, I I purchased this and the stitches were 39,782, right? I'm going to hit the vacuum cleaner. And now I want you to look down here and it says 37,551, which means that there were about 2,000 stitches that really is not necessary for this design. So, you know, because it all it did was just make the design more tense. Now, one of the things that I really love about this feature, and I'm going to um, get out of Embrilliance because I wanted to uh, talk to you guys a little bit about this. Um, why, why is the density repair to me such a big deal? And I'm going to tell you what it is. If you noticed when I first put the item up on the screen, it had 39,000 39, plus stitches, right? When I hit that density repair, the vacuum, it went down to 37. So that means that it did two things for me. What it did was it removed unnecessary stitches. And when you're removing unnecessary stitches, what you're doing is you're saving on thread. Why use the thread if you don't have to, right? That's money coming out of your pocket. Another thing is, Think about it. 2,000 stitches is 2,000 stitches less that you have to embroider, which means that now you save time. So probably something that would have took 40 minutes to stitch will now probably go down to maybe, I don't know, maybe 37, 36. You know, I mean, it's less time and time is money, right? So those are two things that I really, really loved about the density repair unit. I mean, the density repair kit that you can purchase to use along with, um, with Embrillians. And I really think that that's a great value. I don't see a lot of people talking about this particular module that they offer, but when I purchased it and I saw the changes in the number of stitches, that to me was valuable. So anyway, I really just wanted to add that in and show you guys what, you know, what I found because I, I think it's really worth it and stuff. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to do a quick video for you guys and, you know, uh, share these types of things that I do with it brilliance all the time. And I know it helps me and I thought maybe this is something that would help you as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I, you know, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Um, you know, I'm, I do happy embroidery hour, happy embroidery happy hour every Friday at eight o'clock. So anyway, guys, 
hope to talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye.